Hello viewers, I'm Ron Grant coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the Virgin Islands. You're watching 284 Media. Thank you so much for your time and I want to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you a happy Monday. I trust that you all had a beautiful weekend. I am today joined by the Honorable Minister, the Honorable Carvin Malone, at large representative and member of Her Majesty's loyal opposition to, of course, discuss the one BVI agenda. Lots have been happening in the territory of the Virgin Islands uh, post COI recommendations, and he is here to weigh in on many of them. We'll be right back after a quick commercial break. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, daddy. What you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff. I watch him bar. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Viewers, welcome back and thank you so much for sticking with us. As promised, I am joined by former Minister for Health, the Honorable Carvin Malone, at large representative, and now member of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. Uh, Honorable Malone, thank you so much for your time and welcome back to our studios. Well, I'm just happy to be here uh, once again and I look forward to our conversation. Most definitely. Lots have been happening, as I mentioned before, and as you know, uh, sitting as a uh, member now on the opposition, that much has been taking place in our territory within the past few months, of course, uh, post-COI recommendations. Now, you have presented the One BVI Agenda, which essentially outlines the way forward, essentially, for us. I want to take some background uh, before we get into the One BVI Agenda. How did you get to this point uh, with presenting this narrative to the general public? Well, uh, it is not formally presented as yet. What we're doing is um, we're looking in terms of providing the framework so that we can get this moving. It is based on the premise that we as Virgin Islanders, we as belongers, we as residents and as visitors to the Virgin Islands must create a framework for that that we want in the British Virgin Islands from Anagata to Jasper Dyke and everyone in between, Salt Island, um, Guana Island, they, all of the territories, all of the islands that make up the Virgin Islands, we must be able to um, articulate, write, and put in one document what we want for a Virgin Islands. We can, we can no longer just decide to fight against everything that everyone wants for themselves. We have to decide what we want so that we can then move the Virgin Islands forward in such a light, and there's no greater time to do that than now. Now that we have the Constitution Review, those, that document itself would have another 20 to 30 years before it comes for review again, 2040, 2050. So if there's any time to determine what we want going forward, the time is now. You mentioned, Honorable Malone, and that we have to be able to articulate exactly the way forward. Are you of the opinion that we have not been able to do that or perhaps not been doing it to the best of our ability? Well, I think that we have a lot to be desired in terms of making sure that we not only articulate, but we have it concise. We have the, Dr. June Summer was uh, engaged by UNDP to conduct a sustainable development plan for the Virgin Islands, and extensive work has been done as it relates to this. I think that it is important that we now take that document and we look and we uh, enhance it so that it becomes a particular document for moving forward. We have talked about our elusive, I call it, uh, third foot, foot um, uh, in terms of we have tourism, we have financial services, we must be able to look at our economic pillars and see where that is and work towards it so that we can then move with haste towards that third and fourth economic pillars that we are talking about. 
Now, Honorable Malone, I must ask you, I'm sure this is not the first time that uh, officials within the uh, Virgin Islands or residents who are, are caring and considerate about the well-being have sought to present details. What makes the one BVI agenda any different from what has been presented before? Well, what, what, uh, what will make it uh, inclusive because it is not intended to be a quote-unquote a done deal type of a particular agenda. It must be broad based. It must involve um, everyone, basically, um, or representatives from each of the sectors, from Managata to Justin Lake, as I mentioned before, but also uh, from the fishing and farming, from the, um, from the financial services sector, from the tourism sector, from the bare boat se sector, from the construction sector, from all of these particular areas, because it is the sum of the parts is what is going to be critical for us in order to get the master plan and get it all moving. And um, uh, we're always left to be corrected if we feel that we've done a great job in terms of creating the agenda from which we are following, well fine, well there'll be very little and we'll only have to value add to that. We're going to value add to everything that is there, bring it all in one document so that we can be rest assured that when the government or governments here or in the future, start a project, it would not be one that will, quote unquote, be scrapped by the time the next government come in. Because we are looking in terms of resources, we look at it in terms of human and financial resources. So if it's based on a, quote unquote, people's agenda, then once that agenda starts, then um, it will be difficult for any group to come in and say, well, look, um, we don't want a quote unquote market square in the middle of town, quote unquote. We don't want the traffic to turn around. We don't want uh, palm trees in the middle of town. We don't want, um, you know, whatever it is, we must have it so that it could be continued because it was approved by the people and it was approved for the people. Honorable Malone, there is no better time in my opinion than now, but I must ask, why now? Why haven't the people of the Virgin Islands essentially had a part to play or been given an opportunity in, for, for example, the 1BVI agenda. Why haven't their voices necessarily been heard and taken into consideration uh, over the past years? It seems as though, from a resident perspective, only now what we're hearing about, well, what do the stakeholders think? What do the persons from districts one to nine think? Why hasn't that consideration been given over the past few years? Well, we can look in terms of uh, defining uh, why it hasn't been done, or we can look towards the future and making sure that it's done. Are we too late? The answer is no. Um, are we, uh, should it have been done before in terms of having everyone involved so that everyone can feel a part of whatever is moving forward? The answer is yes. But the fact is, is that um, my glass is always going to be half full. It's never going, and even if it's quarter full, it's not going to be three quarters empty, half empty. It's going to be quarter full. So I look towards the future with great enthusiasm and making sure that we can do this because we have a number of folks who are just now coming into voting age. And um, we must make sure that those persons, whether they're from, from, from 12 to 112, or from 18 to 118, or from 20 to 120, that they, even if they felt that they were left out of the process before, no longer should that feeling continue. So I am, I am uh, I'm looking as to the opportunity to be able to embrace this. This is not a closed uh, chapter in terms of the agenda. It has to bring along everyone, all of the elected representatives, all of the persons from the various sectors, so that we can then have an agenda, a plan moving forward that we can be pleased. And have those conversations uh, begun? Those conversations are not begun in earnest because we have had select um, focus groups and we will begin to open it out because uh, we have a number of um, persons abroad being trained in the legal field, for instance, in the administrative field, in the, um, in the health field. We have a number of persons here that are still looking for opportunities all around and so forth. We, so we have, we, have a, we have a lot of work to do and the conversations uh, the, the particular schedule, the agenda, the particular uh, framework has to be built out. So um, I am doing, uh, I'm taking the upfront, uh, call it licks if you want to, in terms of being dear enough 
to say that we have to create this agenda, we have to create the framework, and we must get those persons who can best command the attention of all the other groups. I've called a number of people who can best talk to, relate with, be associated with the 40 and under uh, particular sector of our economy. I can't believe that at my particular age and this stage of life that a 25 year old will relate properly to me for instance. But there are a number of persons, you have people working here, you yourself, uh, who can best relate to the persons um, that we would have to um, you know, talk to and be a part of because 20 years from now, they will be 20 years older. 30 years from now, they'll be 30 years older and say, well, why, why in 2022, 2023, no one afforded me the opportunity or told me in clear terms what we would have been facing 20 years later, 2040, 50, 30 years later, 2050. So this is, this is the path that we have to go in and we, there's no better time to start this, to continue this, than now. Minister Malone, I have to ask you, of course, with the recent uh, Commission of Inquiry uh, recommendations, we've been seeing quite an influx of movement uh, changes across the government and the structure. But I want to ask you, because in the uh, one BVI agenda, we talk about uh, balancing obligations versus expectations. Where, do you, where would you say we're at at this present point between finding a balance between uh, expectations and obligations? Well, well, the fact is this. Um, we have, in the particular Commission of Inquiry, I have stated on my 21st June uh, 2021 submittal to the Commissioner that, um, that we would be able to use some of the findings in the Commission of Inquiry to better prepare us for our movement forward. We have to be able to do this because we have to look in terms, and as I stated publicly before, governance of our people, by our people, is very difficult now because at the end of the day, if you put it to a vote, you've heard me say this before, we would lose that because the people have some concerns of quote unquote local governance without the, um, without you know, some other external force. Look, just concerns or a level of um, lack of trust? Well, it is, um, it is trust. It is um, that based on uh, accountability, um, transparency, and all that you have. But what we will not fall for, and what I do not fall for, is the fact that since the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, we have done all that we need to do in order to build our country. It was not built by strangers, it was built by us. It was not built by um, someone coming down from the sky. We have worked hard in this. There are a few areas that we must be able to improve on, but we cannot um, accept the narrative that we have nothing of which to be proud. We are proud of our accomplishments. We have been asked to do a number of particular development. We have been asked to, um, since the 1960s, when we had the choice of whether or not we go to a unitary um, state with the Queen as the head of state and our own governor general, for instance. We have said then that we need to put in place a number of aspects so that we can then better prepare ourselves if you remember, we had a state of uh, occurrence back then when all of the fundings for the Virgin Islands had to pass through the government or the people in um, um, Antigua, for instance, and they will send it over. We were not pleased with this, and we felt as if we had to move our agenda forward, get back our constitution, number one, 67, get to ministerial government, in uh, 78, stop the particular, um, the particular grant in AIDS. In 84, start our financial services sector. We built our primary schools, built our secondary schools, built our tertiary schools, provided free education, building our um, health network systems, 
We have a financial services of which is the envy of the world. We have a tourism products being expanded. We have invited local folks to participate in that particular growth. They have done so. Now we must be able to then move forward uh, politically because we are in a better position now than we were in 1962 when we were first asked whether or not. And I have something further to say about that, but I'll let you go ahead. No, I have to ask you because you talk about moving forward and one of those aspects of moving forward is definitely the Constitution Review. Of course, a committee has been selected, uh, meetings have been held, the first inaugural meeting uh, has been held. What are some of the aspects of the Constitutional Review uh, 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 team and, and moving the way forward that you are most concerned about that we should, particularly as residents, be paying most attention to? Okay, fine. There are two particular aspects to it. I'm going to take the positive side of it and then we're going to be moving forward. The positive side of it is that um, we have to see if based on the recommended terms of reference to which the Constitution Review Committee is going to be asked to be specific about, are these terms reflective of what the Virgin Islands need, want, must have for the next 20, 30, or 40 years? And I am saying that in the 2007, when the 2007 Constitution Committee was set up in 2005, for instance, there were a lot of, quote unquote, politically advancing terms and conditions. We created the DPP. We created the Attorney General's Chamber, separation of those. We had the Solicitor Generals. We had, uh, we had a number of other institutions registrar of interest. We had the particular um, Bill of Rights for all of our particular people. We had a number of areas which was towards the step of self-governance. In this, we have more administrative issues. And in fact, I have stated this before, I'll state it again. We will be going to the House of Assembly as early as tomorrow maybe, and if we don't reach there, it will be Thursday or next week. Where we, if, where we looked, where we've been asked, sorry, to consider 10 new items other than those placed two years ago. These 10 items were all lifted from the Commission of Inquiry. So there were conclusions or recommendations made by the Commission of Inquiry with recommendations already set. And we asked to, we, we're asking the Commission of Inquiry people to determine whether or not they should be, this should be adjusted based on this. But I would not jump to any conclusions on it. All I'm saying is these are recommendations for inclusion in the terms of reference that were born from this commission of inquiry. We have to see whether or not they're best suited for us. I am going to offer five new and addition terms that I would like to see looked at by the Commission of Inquiry, sorry, by the, um, by the Constitution Review body. Because I think that, and I'm going to be inviting the folks throughout the Virgin Islands to see if there's any other areas that they would like added based on the Constitution, based on what may not be included now in the Constitution, that they would like to have considered specifically so that we can then get this agenda moving. Understood. A minister, hindsight being, of course, uh, 2020, we are uh, pretty much heading into a general election, God's willing. It is constitutionally due, of course, by uh, early next year, May of next year. What are your thoughts as we continue to chart the course, being as though we're, we're essentially working towards uh, many of these recommendations, looking into a general election? Uh, what, do you expect, uh, what do you expect us to be by then? Well... We have to see where we get, where, where do we go from here? Because um, there is a statement that I, that I make and folks are, um, are nervous about the statement. We are under a particular situation where on the 9th of June, 2022, the foreign secretary went to the Privy Council with an affidavit and, and convinced the Privy Council that we need to pass measures suspending portions of our constitution for a two-year period. It was taken to the Queen. She accepted the fact that 
that they were, or, or the Queen's representative, and she accepted the fact that these should be done. They were taken to the, to the parliament, and portions of our constitution have been passed in the UK parliament. They were given to the governor, passed, approved, and just for him to, by proclamation, true gazette, be able to file. He have said that he would hold out on filing this until and unless all the recommendations, all save none, made by the Commission of Inquiry report are implemented. This was agreed uh, by the government and the particular uh, governor and the UK that these will be done. The governor have said, if these are done, I would not then suspend. If these are not done, I will suspend. If these are inhibited, if these are not focused on in terms of any delays caused by these, I would suspend. So the fact is, is that we have seen where the register of interest, and some folks are misinterpreting this because they're saying that the legislators don't want anyone to come and look at the books. This is not true. It was approved that everyone can come, they can review the books, it's just that you can't come and take pictures off, you can't come and copy, you can't walk out with the files. This is all that it says. And the governor has said that he is not pleased that you're not able to do this. So we are still waiting on word back from that as to what will be his course of action and whether or not this will constitute one of the reasons why he would, um, by proclamation, through gazetting, put that suspension into motion. There are a number of other issues that are on the table of which the citizens will bring to light at the time. We will see where, um, in the same register of, register of interest, there was a particular provision for the public officials to be under the same scrutiny as the elected representatives. There was affairs and a in a, an immediate reaction to this. And they said, no, not as yet. We don't want this. But at the end of the day, that is one of the recommendations that have been passed. Yes, it came early, but it's there to come in, whether it's October or November. So we'll have to see whether or not there are any, quote unquote, room for amendments, adjustments, or for a different view with some of these recommendations made by the Commission of Inquiry. Understood. Minister, I have to ask you because I, I, if we, when we look across the, the region and on the international scene, particularly across the region as it pertains to uh, overseas territories, a lot of what we're experiencing here in the territory or have experienced within the last few months, particularly when it comes to uh, the UK uh, influence and Commission of Inquiry recommendations are not isolated incidents. Are we looking closely enough as elected officials and residents, uh, stakeholders, government ministers, at the studies and resources that are available, for example, across the region when it comes to many of these matters that we're experiencing now? Are we paying enough attention uh, to connect the dots? Well, <laughs> that's a very good question and one in which I, you know, I don't want to be subjective about it. The fact is, is that we have to pay more attention. We have had uh, discussions with persons from Turks and Caicos. We've had discussions over different um, waves, airwaves. And they've had discussions on regional discussions, local discussions. Uh, we've invited folks from Montserrat to state, well, what are their circumstances there? Anguilla, what are your circumstances there? Turks and Caicos, Bermuda, Cayman Islands. We have had, um, we have had a number of events throughout the years. I have been keeping an, an eagle eye on these activities and I have warned uh, to such an extent the people of the Virgin Islands, some say it's through uh, riddles and this and so, I don't see it as that. But at the end of the day, we have said that there are certain things in which we are doing, we need to cease and desist. And there are other areas where um, in the global Britain agenda, that no matter what you do, they will seek to enforce certain areas in their agenda on these particular territories. 
We have to be mindful of them. They are difficult discussions, but they are discussions that we must have. And I am saying that at the end of the day, what we have and what I am most concerned about, right, is that if you take the aging from 15 or from 18 to 40, for instance, there's not enough, quote unquote, real interaction where these topics are concerned. I am encouraged by the fact that we, we can bring the crowds out when we have a rise and shine and vibes is playing and all the other bands are playing. I mean, mass amount of people are coming out. Uh, my nephew was involved in the big man of run things race. Mass amount of people in that particular age bracket. We, um, we call a horse race, mass amount of people in the different age bracket. We call a, um, well, I, I would call it a, a, um, a cock play. I wouldn't call it cock fight because that's illegal, right? But we have a... It's illegal, but it still happens. So we, we're, 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 we're aware that okay, it happens. Okay, fine. Yeah. But look at how easy you can get, gather a crowd. But what I'm saying to you is this, right? If we don't get our um, young adults fully engaged, and what I've said to some of our people, that you, know, you don't have to be profanity-laced in order to get the attention of your people. But mm. at the end of the day, we must be able to find a medium, whether it is through music, through sports, through a jam, whatever it is. We don't care how you get here. Get to the point where the protection of your future begins now. Honorable Lone, I am so happy that you have raised that point, but I have to ask you, and, and you raised some very good points about bridging the gap. Can you honestly say that persons of your age group or older or within that demographic are doing enough and are willing enough to help bridge that gap? Well, this is what I'm saying. I, I, I look in terms of where we are. It's not in the correct place. Where we need to be and to find ways in how we get there. So I'm saying, I'm engaging you, I'm engaging uh, Bunchi, I'm engaging whoever it is, whether it's profanity list or not, whatever method it takes for us to look seriously at the topics that will, uh, that will get us moving, because I am concerned. Understood. Speaking that of hard, we speaking are of not That we haven't done the best job possible. Could it be done? My answer is yes. But we have to find different ways of doing it because ZBVI is not the medium for the 40 and under. Um, 284 will try, but I still see that uh, my 26, 20, uh, 25 year old daughter, um, that's not the medium for her either. So there's a number of areas we have to find how best to get the message over in what forum and in what method because those are going to be critical for us to do it. I don't care how we get here. We need to get there. Understood. Speaking earlier of hard decisions and, and tough uh, uh, decision making in order to move forward, of course, since you're uh, uh, leaving the government and joining the opposition, you have continued to be vocal about uh, many issues that are concerning the people. And I think essentially we are, are thankful and grateful to be hearing uh, from you more in this regard. We spoke about general elections. Can the people of the Virgin Islands expect you to be vying for a second term? Well, that will be depending on the people of the Virgin Islands because at the end of the day, I started late. I told people this. So I can't expect to be a four-year or five-term or five -term politician. Um, I didn't even want to run for the particular uh, fourth House of Assembly. But the fact is, is that circumstances had it that I made a decision to do this, which in whatever forum I am required, in order to help bridge the gap, help to bring the Virgin Islands and move the Virgin Islands forward, then I am prepared to do it. If it means running for our next particular term with a team that can embrace the movement that we need to get to, that the people will decide, not that I will decide, because there are too many politicians that go, they dream, have a bad dream and everybody have to live it. The fact is, is that it has to be a people's agenda and one in which folks from Anagata to Justin Dyke, I would always say this, 
um, must be a part of. We are never going to be able to have 100% buy-in into any of the particular programs. But folks must wake up in the morning feeling that there is a reason for wanting to be a part of a Virgin Islands that they have helped to create, helped to build, and helped to mold. Honorable Malone, I want to thank you so much for your time and coming to our studios. We are all we are Invitation is always open for you to come and dialogue, of course. Uh, we're running out of time today, but we'll have you back because there are lots to talk about. Well, sure. I think that, um, as, I will, as I am famous for saying, this is not a one-step dance. The framework is being built. The framework is being dialogued. And I thank you for the opportunity to um, air some of it. There's a lot that is, to, that is actually to be aired, but we must find a way that we can bridge the gap. We must find a way together that we can get the, the entire wide range. Because uh, there is an old saying that the benefit of youth is wasted on the young. No longer can we sit and afford this. We have to get the youth involved. We have to get the youth engaged. And we have to set the particular programs. Now, funny enough, when the youth come with a particular plan, as far as they reckon, if you question any parts of it, then they say that you don't want to hear from the youth. Well, engagement, conversation, is what we'll get is here. And we must be open, whether you're 60 plus or you're 20 and below. The conversation must happen. I appreciate your uh, comments, and I do agree with you many in, in us bridging the gap. I, I do appreciate that. Uh, Honorable Malone, thank you again. Viewers, that is all the time we have. Have a beautiful rest of the day, and have a happy Monday. Bye-bye. Thank you.